I believe that flying saucers are shaped like saucers because that is an ideal resonator for microwaves. Inside this building in northern New Jersey, a small group of people are studying the science they think drives flying saucers. The shape of the craft is dictated by microwave engineering. They're conducting experiments and building tools in an effort to reverse engineer UFOs. Anything that involves moving an object from point A to point B will be affected by this type of technology. I recently had the opportunity to visit Falcon Space, the lab where these experiments in alternative propulsion are taking place. Okay, welcome to Falcon Space. I spoke with Mark, the founder and CEO, to learn more about what goes on here and how we got started down this path. Pretty much we're looking into UFO technology, uh, propulsion, anti-gravity, warp drive, anything that you've seen on Star Trek that could possibly become reality through present technology. We're looking into, we're running the experiments and seeing what's real and what's not. And how long have you been doing this? As a company, we've been a company for about four years, but the dream goes back a bit farther than that. It didn't evolve overnight. How did it initiate? It started off with an inquiry into Judaism. I was brought up as an Orthodox Jew and was taught all these great things about God in heaven and the miracles he performed at the sea and the, the Jews leaving Egypt, the account at Mount Sinai, um, staying in the desert for 40 years and eating the manna. So all those miracles or unexplained phenomena that happened there with God apparently at the helm, or Yehovah, as they called him, uh, point to something that needs to be explained. And when I was about 25 years old, I started to look into the extraterrestrial hypothesis. And to me, that made the most sense. It was the only thing that could explain all the um, inconsistencies that I've seen in the Torah and the, and the old Bible. and. Um, and so on and so forth. And, and it's not just true for Judaism, Mormonism, uh, Catholicism, Islam, Buddhism, all religions seem to be emanating from some sort of extraterrestrial uh, connection. I'm sure for some people, the idea that religious miracles are caused by UFOs might seem a little strange. But doesn't the idea of a god actually fit the definition of extraterrestrial? Sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Magic is miracles. So um, I don't think there is such thing as true miracles. They're all just sufficiently advanced technology, be it spiritual technology that we don't understand or physical technology. It's all technology. Mark searched online and in books for more information on what technology might explain UFOs and religious miracles. That's where I encountered stories of the secret space program, and uh, that led me to believe that the technology to do the miracles of the Bible has already been discovered. It's just waiting to be rediscovered in an open format. What do you mean by that open format? Open format meaning in a way that everyone finds out, it, not done secretly in a lab somewhere where it can be easily shut down or, you know, one person paid off in one way or another and uh, humanity continues without this major breakthrough in science. So I, I think it's already been discovered. Claims of alien technology being covered up are very prominent in UFO lore and the general public seems to mostly agree with this idea. Government programs like Project Blue Book, ATIP, and recent disclosures only add weight to these theories. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. My gosh. What makes you so sure that this technology has already been discovered and has now been lost? 
uh, been covered up. Um, the simplicity of it. Nothing we're doing here is very complex. So if any of this stuff is working and we've seen signs that some of it is working, uh, a lot of this stuff could have been done 70 years ago. Can you give me an example of, of one of those things? Yes, so um, this is a paper from a guy named Albert Overhauser. And uh, you'll see the date on it is actually from 1953. So this was over 70 years ago. It's an old paper. And um, he found a way to orient subatomic particles in the core of the atom. It's called dynamic nuclear polarization or orientation. Dynamic nuclear polarization is a technique that transfers the spin of electrons to the nuclei of atoms. His papers on the subject stopped coming out after this. And uh, another physicist, Frederick Alzafon, came along years later with his paper, Anti-Gravity with Present Technology. He didn't just publish this, he filed for a patent first on the idea. Once he filed for a patent, he's like, okay, that's taken care of. My lawyer's gonna, gonna deal with that. I'm gonna write a paper and present it at the AIAA. Well, it turns out his patent was denied on national security grounds, but the paper was already submitted. So that's how we know about this. Um, and with the national security grounds uh, denial of his patent, there's also, you know, they, they have to sh they shut him up about it too but the paper was already out, so that was already public domain. So um, this was yet another person discovering this effect, but because he had already published, they couldn't shut him up. And that's one of the reasons why we're probably not gonna try to patent this anymore, because um, uh, there are mechanisms in the patent office that allow them to control you once you file a patent, if they have reason to believe that it's of national security concern. Mark believes that dynamic nuclear polarization discussed in those two papers is one of the main technologies used in flying saucers. I believe that flying saucers uh, are shaped like saucers because that is an ideal resonator for microwaves. And being an ideal resonator for microwaves, like you have a dish antenna on top and a dish antenna on bottom, they're able to use microwaves to orient the subatomic particles, which is the primary method of achieving it, that combined with the magnetic field. So the shape of the craft is actually dictated by uh, microwave engineering. In an extremely simplified explanation, the theory is that orienting the subatomic particles within an object will cause that object to become weightless. Mark thinks that evidence of this can be seen within the movement of UFOs and flying saucers. Just like a gyroscope, all you have to do is orient the spins, and then it's free to move along its plane and axes and even do a 90 degree turn at 10,000 miles an hour without any restrictions of inertia. Yet, a flying saucer cannot do this. The reason for that is it would have to take the full amount of propulsion in order to, to do that turn. And it doesn't really have any propulsion mechanisms on board because it doesn't really need it. it. Mostly flies like that. Can't do a barrel roll. Many sightings of flying saucers, we actually see them slowly changing their orientation before they shoot off in a new direction. That's the reason why. How would you account for a lot of people report seeing a tic-tac shape or a cigar shape to a lot of UFOs or UAPs? Um, well, cigar shape is actually one of the easier uh, methods of doing it, uh, primarily because I don't have to make a perfect parabola and you know smooth surfaces. I could just use pipes. Um, but a pipe within a pipe would make a very nice waveguide, and then you could have a coil on the outside so you get your magnetic field and your RF all together. Um, the same principle would apply, except that instead of a flying saucer flying like this, it would now have the orientation along the axes. So such craft would move around like that without restriction, but would have a hard time doing this movement. So imagine this as a cone, it would have a hard time doing that. 
but it would be able to shoot forward and backward, left and right like that, without any problem. But it would be using the same method, just a different shape. You could do this in many different shapes. How did you learn about all this? What are your qualifications? Absolutely nothing. I, I, I did not graduate high school. I, I went to yeshiva, which is um, the equivalent of uh, Judaic studies only. So um, I'm self-taught in everything. And I don't think there is any qualifications that can prepare you for this kind of uh, research because um, everything you're doing, there is no class for it. You're actually making the textbook where uh, there is no OSHA even involved over here because we're, we're figuring out what's dangerous. We're making our own PPE. I'm sure you're familiar with the term tinfoil hat uh, conspiracy theorists, right? There's a reason why they're wearing a tinfoil hat because if they're playing around with microwaves, they get the microwave headache, they start putting down tinfoil. So uh, we found that uh, aluminum foil is not that great. What's even better is silver foil or actually silver covered uh, plastic uh, like nylon. So right behind you is actually these silver covered hoodies. And uh, we wear those whenever the microwaves are on. Those work great. And that's many extraterrestrials are seen wearing materials that look just like that, which would make sense. Basically, basically your own Faraday clothing. What do you think the chances are that you will ultimately be able to build a craft? Uh, very good. I think there's very good chances that we'd be able to build a craft. We, um, on the uh, funding side of things, we've had a lot of investors reach out, um, interested in uh, in funding uh, our, our research. And because um, this isn't just a project of like, let me get rich. This is a project of let me make a difference. Anything that involves moving an object from point A to point B will be affected by this type of technology, except for local delivery, you know, uh, driving to the supermarket or anything like that, that's probably not gonna be affected because you probably use an electric vehicle or, you know, your local vehicle. Th these kind of craft will take over cargo ships, they will take over airplanes, space travel, open pit mining, because you built a mine, the asteroid belt, but you wouldn't be landing them in your backyard to go to the uh, grocery store. Just like nobody is landing helicopters in their backyard to go to the grocery store. But airplanes, cargo ships, a lot of those things would be radically uh, changed by um, the implementation of this technology in wider, uh, wider applications. The work taking place at Falcon Space is pretty interesting. Not only could it change the way we get from one place to another, but it could also change the way we look at religion and our place within the universe. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other videos which cover a wide variety of subjects. If you want to keep up with what I'm working on, head over to my website and sign up for my newsletter.